It was the night before Christmas in Oliver Canto. All the Pokemon were stirring, especially this mouse. The heavy-duty boots were hung by the chimney with care, in hopes that a deli bird would soon be there. The trainers were nestled all snug in their beds, while visions of Gardevoir all danced in their heads. And Mimey in her kerchief and Snorlax in his cap had just settled down for a long winter's nap. Okay, I never realized how long this was, so we're just going to stop it here. Hello everyone and happy holidays. Since my videos are usually 50% Nuzlocke and 50% whatever shenanigans Rando's getting up to, I figured a Christmas special would be a lot of fun to do. But before we get into rules, this is Pokemon Infinite Fusion, the fan game with over 210,000 different Pokemon combinations. And today we're here to see if we can beat a hardcore Nuzlocke using only gift and traded Pokemon. That means if a Pokemon faints, it's considered dead. The level cap is the next leader's ace. No active items can be used in battle, and we're going to be playing on set mode. So like I said a moment ago, most of our encounters are going to be gift Pokemon or traded Pokemon. I'm going to be considering static Pokemon to also be gift Pokemon for the purposes of Misfit Toys. And we're going to see if we can defeat Rando and Giovanni and save Christmas. But with that, let's get into it. Actually, just kidding before we get into it. <clears throat> if you haven't already, please, please, please make sure that you subscribe to the channel, like the video, and leave a comment down below if you're so inclined. I'm trying to get to 10,000 subs before our first year anniversary in March, and I feel like we can do it. Just come on. Do the thing. For me... For Santa? All right, now we're really getting into it. Starting things off in Professor Oak's lab, we see that as opposed to our normal three starters, there's just one Pokeball there waiting for us. Rando is a little disappointed that he doesn't get to choose this special Pokemon, but it contains a deli bird. And what's more Christmas than this shady little penguin? After Rando goes ahead and gets his Pokemon from his grandfather, he decides it's time for us to face off in a Pokemon battle. Starting things off, he goes and sends in his Lugia. Oh my god, really? A double fused Lugia is going to be our starter that we go against this entire run? But it looks a little darker than usual. I think we can more or less figure out exactly how this is going to go as Lugia goes ahead and slams us with a couple of weather balls, ending the battle fairly quickly. But something is changing inside of Rando. He can feel his Christmas spirit draining. Emboldened by his first win, he goes ahead and leaves the lab. But something dark seems to be growing inside of poor Rando. Before facing off against Brock, there's a handful of Pokemon that we can go ahead and grab. First off, we get our Pikimuku over in Viridian City. Additionally, we go ahead and exchange a Spearow that we catch over on Route 22 for Belly and a nice little gift exchange. What to do is see a big bug, so he goes ahead and gifts us a Pineco. And we have one more gift to exchange as we go ahead and give this kid a Mankey, and as a result, we go ahead and get ourselves a Tyrogue. Before facing off against Brock, we're going to go ahead and fuse our Tyson with Bellsprout, and we're going to get ourselves this silly little Bell Rogue. Next up, we're going to go ahead and fuse Pukimuku with Pineco, and the result is this silly little Black Pinecone, but with a dangerous, explosive secret. Now it's time for us to face off against Brock and his rock Pokemon. Someone's drained all of Brock's Christmas spirit as he goes ahead and sends out this Geogee against our Bell Rogue. Going for our rock polish, he's going to go ahead and increase his speed as we go ahead and do a, quite a bit less damage than I thought I would. Realizing I should have probably gone for a fake out in the first round, we go ahead and use growth to raise our attack and special attack as a gust comes in absolutely devastating us, but we do heal back up a bit. Not considering the repercussions of our actions, our first Pokemon already goes down. Shoot. Swapping out into our little Pinecone, we're able to go ahead and take care of the Geoji pretty quickly, which leads into Dignix, his ace. While Dignix should be able to take pretty quick work of us, it doesn't use Rock Tomb, thankfully, and after a handful of bug bites, we're able to take this bad boy down, earning our Boulder Badge. As a special parting Christmas gift, Brock goes ahead and gifts us but a single lump of coal. But it turns out that coal's a Geodude. Thanks, Brock. And a Merry Christmas to you. Before heading into Mount Moon, we're going to go ahead and grab this magic heart because there is no greater gift than the gift of capitalism. Outside of Mount Moon, we find Nurse Joy tending to this wounded Geodude. Brock comes rushing in as fast as he can on a one onyx open sleigh. 
He goes ahead and slaps a bow on that Geodude's broken spot, and it is good as new. He takes a moment to thank Joy, placing one hand on her shoulder, smiling wryly. Thank you. But the only gift I want for Christmas is you. Her response is clear. At the end of Mount Moon, we accidentally interrupt the Team Rocket Christmas party. It turns out Giovanni's not up to anything criminal or nefarious. He's trying to make Pokemon fusions more efficient so he can gift the power of fusion to everyone, not just here in Kanto. And while that's a great dream, he goes ahead and tries to unveil his greatest creation yet, the Triple Fusion. Unfortunately, the machine explodes, resulting in Team Rocket getting blasted off for once trying to do a good deed. And we move on to do something else. After giving this guy a boot, he goes ahead and gives us a whooper. I think that's a pretty fair trade. And over in the Cerulean City Pokemon Center, we go ahead and get ourselves a Bulbasaur. Thanks so much. Before facing off against Rando over on Nugget Bridge, we're gonna go ahead and fuse up our Bulbasaur with Magikarp. And this silly little screamer is just happy to be here. And fusing up Geodude with Wooper, we're gonna go ahead and get this silly little guy. I love Woo Dude. After doing a little bit of grinding, our Bulbasaur is going to go ahead and evolve into the wonderful Magisaur. And then this guy's going to go ahead and evolve one more time from Magisaur into the, honestly, really awesome Garasaur. Boobdoo's going to go ahead and evolve as well, growing some fins and becoming Quagdude. We can see a small, dark aura around Rando, draining his Christmas spirit. Bah! Humbug, he says. Nioto comes in up against our Quag dude, and after two smackdowns, we're able to take him down while taking only minimal damage, but unfortunately, we do get poisoned here. When Mantata comes in, I go ahead and swap in the Garasaur, forgetting that I'm not Rock anymore, as he goes ahead and uses a Seismic Toss. After a handful of exchanges, and after Rando goes ahead and heals up, we're able to take it down pretty quickly. When his double fuse Lugia comes in, I go ahead and set up a Leech C to try to get some chip damage and heal myself up a bit. Once again, forgetting in 6.0 that I'm poison, not grass anymore. Gusts don't do a whole heck of a lot of damage to us as bites go ahead and slam this guy into the red, but not before we get Whirlwinded out. When Whirlwind brings out our Deli Bird, we go ahead and swap back out into Quag Dude and let the Leech Seed finish off the Lugia. Finally, his Abra comes in, and after one magnitude, we're able to seal its fate and defeat Rando for the first time. After the fight ends, he mutters something about trying to make sure Christmas doesn't come this year, and he knows exactly what he needs to do, rushing off into the distance. We head over to Bill's house where he's finishing up an experiment. For the first time in over 30 runs, we allow him to show us his Pokemon collection and our gift and all expenses paid cruise, baby. And now it's time for Space Off against Misty and her water Pokemon. Dean comes in as her first Pokemon, and after two Razor Leafs, we're able to take it down without much of an issue. Leading into our ace, Audio and I love the new sprite. After trading back and forth for a while and ultimately getting confused, we go ahead and swap into our Pikuko, and after just one bug bite, we're able to take it down earning our Cascade Badge. For our efforts, Misty goes ahead and gives us a star to place atop our Christmas tree. Over in the daycare, we're gifted an egg. We'll raise it as if it were our own. Over in Vermilion City, we go and exchange a Meowth for a Slowpoke. We also go ahead and trade this bird for a bird. Apparently, people really like exchanging gifts over in Vermilion Cities. We go ahead and swap a Drowsy for Leonard the Seal. Well, can't rename that. Also over on the SSM, we go ahead and beat up this guy again for another fossil. Then finally we go ahead and swap a Shelter out for Rex the Growlithe. Before facing off against Rando, our Quag dude is gonna go ahead and evolve, turning into the very silly Quagler. We run into Rando over on the SSN, where he says that he's convinced all of the rich people on this boat not to donate anything to any orphans for Christmas. Why, why would you do that? That's so random and mean. Sending in his Neoto against our Quagler, it only takes a couple of smackdowns for it to do, well, what it does best, smack him down. 
Manicade comes in next, and once again, I forget that I'm not Rock. Swapping into Garasaur, and I am happy that I got Karate Chomp because it's not very effective. But guess what? It wouldn't have been super effective anyways, you silly goose. Just like last time we faced off against Randall, we go ahead and exchange throws for leaves, ultimately coming out on top thanks to our berry healing us back up. And Starbuck comes in just to say hi before he goes a back in. When his final Pokemon Lugia comes in, we go ahead and set up the Leech Seed to get some chip damage in, eventually getting Whirlwind out into our Pineco. And after some more Whirlwinds, Bug Bites, and Smackdowns, eventually we take the Big Bird down. And Rando vows that if he can't get what he wants for Christmas, then no one will get anything. And with that taken care of, it's now time for us to take on Lieutenant Surge and his Electric-type team. Honestly, going into this fight, I'm a little nervous, even though we do have Quagler. If I have to swap out of Quagler, I am basically toast since all my Pokemon are water type. But we do get super lucky managing to connect with three magnitudes in a row for the Oko on every single one of his Pokemon. Nice. Thunder Badge. As our reward, Lieutenant Surge gives us the balls for our tree. Rock Tunnel, this man gives us the gift of a sword, which I don't know if that's good for a child, but whatever. Over in Celadon City, we grab an Eevee. We grab a Dratini because capitalism. Bill goes ahead and gives us a Porygon back over at his house. Over in Pewter City, while waiting for our fossils, we go ahead and get ourselves an Oracorio. We grab ourselves our Ammonite and our Anorith. Using our Growlithe with Voltorb, we're going to get ourselves this awesome ball of energy, Voltith. We're now going to go ahead and combine our Espeon with our new Oracorio, and we're going to get this magnificent Oropion. Then it goes ahead and evolves the first time into an Electrolyte, and then one more time into this absolute unit of an Electronine. We then go ahead and trade a Raichu for a Ponyta. And our Puka Cone goes ahead and evolves into a Pukatris. After getting a mysterious message from Rando, we head over to Pokemon Tower, where he tells us he's perfected his plan to steal Christmas. He's found a couple of Team Rocket Grunts who are none too happy about Giovanni's turn to the side of light. And he reveals to us an old man being dragged upstairs by two members of Team Rocket. Smell you later, Santa Claus. <laughs> We're going to go ahead and grab ourselves an armor fossil. Before facing off against Erica, our Garasaur is going to go ahead and evolve into its miraculous final form. Garasaur. And with that all taken care of, it's time for us now to face off against Erica and her grass Pokemon. I'm so used to modern mode where you need to pivot and do a bunch of stuff here, so it's really nice to just absolutely mow down the entirety of Erica's team here. GG, Erica. Rainbow Badge acquired. And as a reward, she gives us a Christmas tree. Back at our house, our sister goes ahead and gives us an egg, which goes ahead and hatches itself into a Squirtle. We go ahead and wake up this sleeping bear. And now it's time for space off against Koga and his poison Pokemon. In classic mode, we can start things off with Rex here, who can go ahead and just flamethrower the first three Pokemon of his team, taking them down in one shot. When Chinook comes in, we go ahead and get lucky enough to get the burn off, and at this point, it's just about pivoting and switching out until eventually this thing takes itself out between takedown and the burn. And with that, we've earned our soul badge. As a reward, he gives us some figgy pudding ahead and gives us a Lapras. And before we go ahead and face off against Rando and Giovanni, we're gonna finally fuse our Deli Bird up with its proper partner, Snorlax. And Deli Lax is just so happy to be giving you the gift of berries. Our Quaggler's also gonna go ahead and finally evolve into its excellent final Quaglum form. We run into Rando over in Silco, where it turns out Giovanni's actually trying to turn over a new leaf and donate one Pokemon to every child in Kanto so they can all live out their dreams to be Pokemon trainers. And with Santa captured, Rando wants to use Santa's magic to steal those Pokemon and fuse them together to become the most unstoppable trainer ever. And we need to do something about this power-hungry Rando, folks. 
After Need OG out manages to poison Quagler, we go ahead and swap out into our Garasaur. This thing is a hell of a lot more powerful than I remember it being, and we proceed to just absolutely get our butts whipped as an Ice Fang does a lot less than I anticipated, so we go ahead and swap out front to Rex. A Thrash comes in doing about 25% to us, and we can finish it off with a Discharge, leading into Lugia. Lugia goes ahead and sets up the rain, so we go ahead and use a Discharge, doing some decent damage to it, as a Hydro Pump comes in and absolutely annihilates us. Oh, I didn't think he'd already have that. Swapping into our Pukatris. We go ahead and go for a Toxic as an extra sentry does some decent damage to us despite it not being effective. At this point, I'm hoping that I can just outlast this thing as an Aeroblast comes and doing some decent damage to us, activating our berry as we heal back up with a recover. Another Aeroblast comes in doing a little bit less damage as we go ahead and start using Curse, even though this thing is using special attacks against us. Not exactly sure why we're doing this, as Extra Sentry comes in getting us down to about half again. After getting knocked down to about a quarter, we heal back up with Recover, with the Poison taking Lugia out. Electados comes in next, and I think that I'm in the clear as he goes ahead and goes for a Screech, and we get the Toxic on it. After doing some chip damage, a discharge comes in doing absolutely massive damage to us, so we have to swap out as I go ahead and send in Quaglim as a Thunderfang fails to do anything since we are ground, not rock. Yay, I remembered. With the Smackdown, we're able to take the thing down, which is going to have him pivot over into his next Pokemon, Tauros. Hoping he's going to use a normal move, we go ahead and swap into Orpeon, calling the takedown. As the Zen Headbutt comes in doing some decent damage to us, but Air Slash is a lot less than I thought it would. And not even thinking about payback, we get absolutely destroyed as we send in Delilax. A payback again does about 50% to us because I got them Delibird stats as we go ahead and use Fly, which does absolutely nothing. And at this point, I am in such... A crummy spot. I can't switch. I can't kill it. And this thing is just keeps on smacking the ever living crap out of me. And a takedown from the Tauros takes down our Deli Lax as we send in Garasaur, cutting its attack down. But guess what, buddy boy? It does not matter because another takedown takes out our most powerful Pokemon as we swap into Quaglim. And this time I wish that I was Rock. We are down to our last Pokemon, folks. As Pukatris comes in against Starbra, a Power Gem gets us down to just 10 HP. And a Confuse Ray. But we managed to break through and defeat Rando with only one Pokemon remaining in our party. I cannot believe this. And even though our team is down to its last member, one silver lining is that we do give the Sylph President and Giovanni enough time to escape, leaving Rando without a way to steal all those Pokemon. Needing to rework our team, first we're going to go ahead and fuse Blastoise with Bastiodon, and I've used this fusion in the past, and I love Blastdon. We're going to go ahead and evolve our Porygon V and fuse it with Muck, for this excellent Poriuk error code. And the Sludge Viral Pokemon is excellent. We're gonna go ahead and fuse our Rapidash up with Lapras. Azarian's Ponyta, look at Pony Ross. Then we're gonna go ahead and reverse the fusion into the much more efficient Lapdash. Grab our Jaw Fossil. Now we're gonna go ahead and fuse up our Tyrantrum with Revenant, and we're gonna get this amazing Treatum. And with Sylphgo taking care of us, now time for us to take on Sabrina and her psychic Pokemon. She starts off by singing Hitmime, who BT dubs super cool dude, who goes ahead and sets up a nasty plot as we go for a crunch, taking her down into the red. After she goes ahead and uses both of her hyper potions, a psychic takes us down to our berry, and we're able to grab the KO, leading into Estreon. Ashran goes ahead and sets up the future site, but luckily for us, two hits is all it takes as we heal ourselves back up with Horn Leech, leading into Genkazam. Swapping out to Pukatris, because honestly I'm afraid this thing's gonna one-shot me, a Shadow Ball comes in doing about 30% to us, as another one goes ahead and takes us down to the red with a crit, but we do heal up. 
Ababite does basically nothing, which I now don't know what to do as another Shadow Ball comes in, bringing me down to just four HP. And I know that if I swap out, that person screwed, so we go ahead using our innards out to get Gankazam way down into the red. Pucatrice, you are the savior of this run, and I will always remember you, my friend. We get lucky sending our T-Rex back in as a Calm Mind seals his fate, and a Crunch KOs, and a Labro goes down in one, earning ourselves our Marsh Badge. GG Sabrina. And as a roar, she goes ahead and gives us this bird because that song is all about birds. On Cinnabar Island, we find ourselves this lonely doggy. And we also turn in our old amber for an Aerodactyl. First up, we're going to go ahead and infuse our Togekiss with Aerodactyl for this absolutely adorable Totodactyl. Next up, we're going to go ahead and infuse Absol with Aegislash. And Aegisol is an amazing sprite. Now it's time for us to take on Blaine and his fire Pokemon. As he sends in this sneezy horse, we go in and send in our pile of goo. In the time set of three minimizes, all this horse does is manage to set up the sun as we go ahead and slam it with a sludge wave, destroying it, leading into Magdon. Once Magdon comes in, it does manage to connect with a fire punch, which does massive damage to us, and it manages to get the burn off. While the Sludge Wave does do decent damage to it, we are in danger, so we go ahead and swap in the Lap Dash as a Surf comes in doing about 50%, only getting reduced because of its berry, which does mean on the following turn we can take it down, which leads into Chardactyl, which I know Chardactyl has a cooler sprite than this. I'm not sure why it's using the generated one, but, you know, whatever, I guess. Two Surfs go ahead and take Terror Chardactyl, and his final Pokemon, 9-9, comes in, and I've never seen this sprite. That's really cool. A Thunder Fang takes us way down into the red, and we get him down to basically nothing, but we do have to swap. So we go ahead and send in our Treatum, as a Thunder Fang comes in doing nothing, but it does get the Paralysis. And after breaking through our confusion, an Earthquake seals its fate and earns us our Volcano Badge. And for Christmas, we get another bird. In Mount Ember, we run into Giovanni. It turns out his starter Pokemon plan hinged on the Triple Fusion machine working properly. That way he could create a bird powerful enough to rival the speed and magic of Santa. And he's done it. Zap Mulcuno, the most powerful bird conceivable, will allow him to deliver starter Pokemon to every child in Kanto. There's just one problem. Zapmokuno won't listen to Giovanni. It breaks free of its Master Ball, and it comes straight for us. And we have to take this thing down. Sending in Poriler first, I assume that Discharge is going to do some decent damage to this thing, but unfortunately Download ups my attack and not my special attack, which means that my Discharge is leaving quite a bit to be desired. And that's what she said. I'm sorry, I had to. If I didn't make that joke, somebody was going to. But anyways, we go ahead and send in our T-Rex once Pori Lurk goes down, and two rock slides are enough to take out two of the three birds with only Zapdos remaining. It only takes one more crunch to take the bird out, but unfortunately, the result defuses the three of them as they scatter back into the wind. The only way that we'll be able to save Christmas Giovanni says, is with those three birds and Santa. So now we need to collect them and collect them we shall. First things first, we're gonna go ahead and face off against Moltres, Articuno, and Zapdos. Now we're gonna go ahead and fuse up Talonflame with Articuno for honestly this really awesome sprite in Artiflame. For our 8th badge, it's time for us to take on Giovanni and his ground-type Pokémon. With Ryros in as his first Pokémon, it's easy enough to take it down to just two Horn Leeches as it goes ahead and whips up the Sandstorm, which is going to up his team's special defense. When Glystar comes in, a Poison Jab does absolutely massive damage to us, and an Earthquake does okay damage, but I am forgetting that this thing is dark and not rock, so at that point we swap into our Togedactyl.
Forgetting the Fairy Fleet's poison, a poison jab does some pretty decent damage to us, but we are doing some pretty great damage with Aura Sphere. As it goes ahead and swaps Glystar out. Afraid of an electric move, we go and swap back out into our tree as he takes the next turn to heal up. A Discharge comes in doing very little as an Earthquake absolutely annihilates this thing. With Glystar back in again, we go ahead and send in our Horsey as a Mega Horn comes in doing about 25% to us and a Surf takes this bad boy down. Go Champs up next as the Surf comes in, bringing him way down almost to his sturdy, and an Earthquake comes in destroying my Horsey. No! Sending an Art of Flame of Freeze Dry goes ahead and finishes off the Go Champ. His final Pokemon, Rylax, comes in, and we go ahead and set up a Will O Wisp, cutting his attack down as he just goes for a Horn Drill. And it's at this point that I realize that the only thing that he can hit me with is Horn Drill, so we stay in going for a bunch of freeze dries until we eventually take this bad boy down. And I'm really happy that the luck was in our favor this time, but with that, we have now earned our Earth Badge and our ability to enter the Pokemon League. Giovanni gifts us a Golurk, and we head back over to the Haunted House and grab the Mimikyu we missed. Then we're gonna go ahead and fuse up Dragonite with Mimikyu. And this Miminite is horrifying. Now it's time for us to check out our team before we head in and face off against the Elite Four. Starting off, we have Miminite with Playrough, Aquatail, Shadow Claw, and Roost. Then we have Tree Trum with Horn Leech, Earthquake, Crunch, and Rock Slide. Togedactyl with Iron Head, Draining Kiss, Aura Sphere, and Air Slash. Adrasol with Sacred Sword, Swords Dance, Night Slash, and King Shield. Art of Flame with Fly, Flamethrower, Freeze Dry, and Will O Wisp. And finally, Blast On with Iron Defense, Ice Beam, Ancient Power, and Surf. And with that, now it's time for us to take on Lorelei and her Ice type Pokemon as a Mechmorgon comes in as our first Pokemon. I swear this thing had a different name before, but you know, what the hell do I know? For some reason, I go ahead and use Play Rough here, even though it's a fire type Pokemon, but after a couple of Shadow Claws, we do manage to take it down despite being burnt. When Tentacaster comes in, we go ahead and swap out into Blaston. And I start spamming Ancient Power, really hoping that I can go ahead and get a stat boost on literally any of these. After using all five of our Ancient Powers, Tentacaster is now down into the red, and we, after getting the Omni Boost, we go ahead and take it down, leading it to Weaveross, and I swear to God, it was a different name before. Out next comes my bro, and a couple of Surfs managed to take it out without much trouble, finally leading it to Jin Growth, her final Pokemon. After getting put to sleep, we go ahead and swap into our Aegisol, taking an Ice Punch like a boss, and going for a Night Slash, bringing it down into the yellow, and a second one takes it down. And with that, we've defeated Lorelei. Up next is Bruno, who's in an incredibly sour mood because the only thing he's ever gotten for Christmas is coal, and he plans on using that coal to grind us into dust. Mavire comes in as his first Pokemon, and now that Mimonite has Dragon Dance, we're gonna go ahead and stack up a couple of those while we're safe hiding behind our disguise. After stacking up two, we go for a Play Rough and take down Mavire in just one shot, leading into Steechamp. When Steechamp comes in, we manage to get a Crit Oko, which is awesome, but Magnetics comes in and takes our first hit like a boss. After a little bit of back and forth, it manages to connect with the Zap Cannon, which gets us super low, and gets the paralysis, so we need to swap out. We go ahead and send in Tree Trump, who goes for an Earthquake, doing some pretty big damage, getting him down just below half. After that, he swaps into Psychross, and after we go back and forth for a couple of rounds, we eventually swap into Art of Flame, taking it out with a Flamethrower. Magnetis comes back in, and after two Flamethrowers, we manage to take it out as well, as it misses the Zap Cannon. And here comes this punk. I always forget that Marochan has counter as it goes ahead and takes out my legendary bird. But Togodactyl comes in, getting us revenge and the KO, defeating Bruno and showing him why he deserves nothing but coal for Christmas. 
Agatha says if we're going to have any hope of saving Christmas, we're going to have to face off against her and her five ghosts of Christmas past, present, future, and two other ones I can't think of. Sending in Mimimite as our first Pokemon, we're able to stack up two Dragon Dances and take out our first three Pokemon without much of an issue. Once Snorgard comes in, I remember that this thing is actually poison now and not Ghost. So we go ahead and swap into Aegisol, who after a couple of hits, is able to take the big guy down. Once Wubgar, her final Pokemon, comes in, we go ahead and take some time to max out our attack with Swords Dance before getting the Oko on Wubgar and moving on to Lance. And that brings us to Lance, the naughtiest boy of them all. Lance's dragons were running interference in the air, which knocked Santa's sleigh out of the sky and allowed Rando and Team Rocket to capture him in the first place. Planning on setting up a sweeping, we go ahead and set up a couple of dragon dances while we wait for him to break our disguise. We're able to avoid the outrage and we take him down in just one play rough, leading into Togan Knight. Which, I'm forgetting, is no longer a dragon, it's flying. It's going to take me a little bit of time to get used to this, but it doesn't matter as we're knocked down below half, so we go ahead and swap in our Togodactyl. But like I was just saying a moment ago, this thing's not dragon, even though I keep on going for Draining Kiss. Switching over to Air Slash, we're trying to get the flinch off, but I never quite get there as I'm knocked down to just 24 HP. After Lance heals up, we're going to go ahead and swap into our Blast on as he goes ahead and slams us with an Ancient Power. After getting hit with an Ice Beam, he goes ahead and swaps into his Porygro, which is Dragon, and we managed to do about 60% on our first hit and take it down on the second. Dogonite goes back in, so we decided to go for an Ancient Power, and lucky for us, we get the Omni Boost, and it only takes a couple more hits to take him down. Tyranodactyl comes in next, which can be a huge issue for most teams, but Blastom's bulkiness allows us to take him down without much trouble, which leads into his final Pokemon, Typhnare. We go ahead and swap into our T-Rex, and we get taken down to about 50%, which is a bit more than I expected to get hit for, but we're able to take him out after just one Earthquake. And with that, we've defeated Lance, the Master of Dragons. But one challenge still remains. As we enter the champion's chamber, we see Santa at the back of the room, bound to a chair, a Pokeball-shaped gag in his mouth. There's so much fear in his eyes. Do you know what I wanted for Christmas, Santa? Rando says. No. Santa responds. I wanted something that would finally help me make friends, so I wouldn't be alone. And do you know what you gave me, Santa? A Nintendo 64 with only one controller. The only game, Quest 64. How was I going to make friends when my only virtual companion was Brian? It was there that I vowed to destroy you and Christmas. And Lukia has shown me the way. There's an unspeakable darkness emanating from Rando. The arena thunders as we trade blows. The battle is mighty, but we have the upper hand. Because there is no greater power than the power of the Christmas spirit. The spirit of giving. The spirit of merriment. And it will always overcome the wicked. I summon everything that I have and let forth one Final blast of Christmas spirit, releasing Santa from his bonds, the ball gag no longer in his mouth, in a mighty ho, ho, ho. When the dust settles, the dark Lugia has fallen. And I stand over Rando's broken body, broken spirit. And I extend my hand. And in it, a second N64 controller. And a copy of Super Smash Brothers. In the other hand, a copy of Mario Kart and Jet Force Gemini. 
Merry Christmas, Rando. Well, that took kind of a weird turn at the end. But if you made it this far into the video and you haven't already, please make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a like, and maybe leave a comment down below. No matter how you celebrate, where you celebrate, or what you're doing this winter, thank you so much for joining, and I hope you all have a happy new year and a happy holiday. Catch you next year.